Uh, you you was in a you you was in a live feed on uh on YouTube or Facebook? Facebook. Oh, okay, okay. So you uh you do your live feeds on Facebook. You don't you don't do it on YouTube? You don't have anything on YouTube? Um, this is the thing, you know, like I know for a fact that if I make a YouTube video right now, a YouTube channel right now, I won't be consistent like I should. Oh, so okay. I told myself, you know what? Let me go ahead and just build a following, you know. So that way when I do execute my YouTube and when I do start writing my book, people already know what they're buying it to. You know, this is real life. You know, it's, it's results. And people love to buy what they can relate to, and they love to invest in what they know is real. All right. You know, well, hold, so, that, hold, hold, hold that thought now. Hold, hold that thought. Sorry. That's a lot. Oh. Hold that thought. Who, who is that <laughs> DJ like that? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you guys know what's going on. It is me, Locked Out Men, here in the place to be. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked Out Men podcast show. That is about the best show on YouTube right now. Uh, before I get started, before I get started, I got an email that sort of surprised me yesterday. I am one of the top 50 YouTubers to watch. Uh, I would get, I would give you guys the, uh, the blog spot that, uh, that talks about me, uh, later in the, later in this podcast. But yeah, I am, I am super stoked right now to, to, to at least be acknowledged by somebody out there that put me in one of the top 50 uh youtubers to watch now the youtubers that's on there that's that's on the list with me i'm not i'm familiar with some but i'm not familiar with all of them so congratulations to those that's on that list as well well of course i am here i am back with another podcast interview for you guys and uh this young lady comes by way of facebook i'm trying to set it up there we go this young lady comes by way of facebook and this video that i happen to see her in this is the video that i seen her in that is the young lady on top of uh on top of the car trailer strapping down them cars you know what i'm saying and they say that uh, that this is only a man's job, but you can see that the women could get into it too, getting down dirty and uh and grinding up there. Yes, sir. We are about to <laughs> we about to welcome to the podcast. Now I'm about now I want to make sure I get her name right. Ariel <laughs> Ariel. Israel to the show. <laughs> What's going on there, young lady? Hey, how are you? And it's actually Ariel Israel. Ariel <laughs> Israel. Well, why don't you let my listeners yes. and my viewers know what 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 that name means? So, um, my original name that I was born with was actually Mercedes. Um, McLaughlin, you know, a lot of people don't know that. Um, it, it was a long story, more about my, uh, you know, my religious, religious beliefs, why I changed it or whatever. But my name is actually Ariel Yisrael, and it means lioness. Lioness. And um, okay. I'm big on people speaking things into existence because it's definitely power and life in our tongue. You yeah. know, death of life in our tongue. So, you know, I tell people to say it, you know, so I can become that lioness. And that's definitely what I am, you know. So it's a perfect name for me. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up, man. A lot of people, a lot of people got to watch what they say because some stuff that they speak into existence could be negative. You know what I'm saying? So it's always positive. Mm -hmm. It's always positive vibes to speak whatever you want. Like if, if you got a goal set or something like that, you know, speak it into existence so you can work at it, work towards it. All right. True, so, true. And like I tell people, you know, like I'm not I'm not really big on pushing religion on people, but you know, there's even a scripture that says that there's power, uh, you know, the tongue holds life and death in it and your words are gonna beat you to where you're going first. So if you're not speaking it up, whatever you're speaking up, you're gonna get there before your uh your words are gonna get there before you get there. 
So okay. whatever you're speaking up, that's exactly how your life is going to look. That's, and it's real. That's what's up. That's what's up. Where where, where are you from? It's our, am I pronouncing it right? Ariel. You can just call. You can just call me Queen. All right, that's Queen. Cool. That that'll work. That'll work. That's that's a lot easy. That's a lot a, easy for me. So where where are you right, out of? Right. Where are you from? I'm originally from St. Louis, uh, but right now I've been living in Georgia for the last four years. All right. Mm-hmm. Why why the migration? Why why the migration to uh, Georgia? Well, honestly, uh, I believe in divine manifestation. So I just feel like wherever I started at, you know, I put together vision boards and I just asked God to put me where I needed to be at. And, then, you know, I can I can say I never understood why I was here in Georgia, but it was literally for me to become a successful makeup artist and to start the trucking company. So um, when I originally, I was living in Florida first and um, after I got my cosmetology license, I was just like, hey, you know, I need to go somewhere where it's going to be popping for me. So um, I ended up coming down to Georgia and um, I started doing makeup, uh, what, five years ago. Mm-hmm. So I've been here five years. I'm oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. So I started doing makeup five years. I just celebrated my five year anniversary as a makeup artist. And then I started doing trucking last August. Oh, okay. Okay. So and, um, I've been doing the trucking ever since. So mm-hmm. what, what was life like back in Missouri? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not going to say horrible, but, you know, I did most of my growing up there. Um, Just after a while, I kind of knew that it wasn't a place for me to be to be successful, you know. Um, So I ended up leaving, you know, and I tell people a lot of times, you sometimes got to leave what's familiar to be successful because what's familiar would keep you in a bind. You got to get uncomfortable. You got to get around a different environment. So I really just knew that location matter and i just started migrating until i found what was for me so okay that's what's up yeah. a lot of you know a <laughs> lot of it's it's unfortunate that in order to become successful you 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 really have to leave the home that you know about you know a lot of a lot of what artists makes it unfortunate? a lot of artists did it a lot of uh a lot of uh um uh was what's these uh movie stars they done it you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? You know, you come to find out that, you know, Steve Harvey is originally from Ohio. You come to find out that, uh, you know, was, uh, um, what's that? What's that one you name? Halle Berry. She's originally from Ohio. So, you know, mm-hmm. so you, you come to find out those stars, those artists and where they came from, you know, they, they tell, they all tell the same story. You know, they they grew right. they grew up. Uh, they knew that they knew that in order to get to where they needed to be, they actually had to leave. You had to leave your old stumping grounds in order to become successful. So, in order for you True. to step out of the step out of the mold from whatever was going on with you in Missouri, you step up and you tried your hand in in Florida, and then now you're you're here in Georgia. It's just kind of funny to me. I actually started in California. I've been uh, everywhere. I literally just moved around until I was fat. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's just funny to me that everybody <laughs> that everybody migrates down to Georgia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm seeing these memes all the time like, yo, stop coming. We're, <laughs> we're packed. <laughs> you know, so... So, you yeah. know what's so funny? I've seen that uh, meme before I just moved down there, and I was like, "Look, I'm coming anyway." <laughs> <laughs> you say you coming anyway? You coming anyway? So I'm coming anyway. So, but I, I loved it though. I discovered a lot of stuff about myself here. Okay, so five years uh, in the cosmetology game uh, as a makeup artist. Uh, have you have you made anybody up that was famous, or what, what was uh, what was your life like during that little time right there? <laughs> You know what's so funny? When I had first got here, you know, I was so intimidated, you know, because I, I knew that I just was beginning, you know, and uh, I just broke out of that shell. And I, I look, I started doing makeup out of the gym bag. You know what I mean? I got to tell people that because people don't understand, man, you got to start from somewhere. You can't keep letting people get it, but your mind is telling you you can't do this. You know, and I had that in my mind that fear, you know, and um, I just bust out the scenes. And long story short, I literally went from working out of a gym bag I literally was using makeup from the dollar store, mm-hmm. like a beauty supply. Mm-hmm. And, and that transitioned into doing, um, I've done, I've done stuff for like many celebrities. Like, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the group, um, boys to men. Yeah. Um, yeah. not boys yeah. to men, but, uh, what is the group that, uh, girl LeVert put together? I ended up doing makeup for them. Um, I got a chance to do makeup for a movie. 
I got a chance to do um, all my clients. Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I freelanced for different companies. Um, I did a lot of stuff. I actually did the editor of Vogue's makeup. I didn't even know she was the editor of Vogue. <laughs> the whole time I'm doing her makeup, I did not know. Okay. Um, so I've done a lot of stuff, you know, networking. I've done stuff to play theater. You know, um, it, it's just it's crazy, you know. And I was just a little girl with a, a gym bag. <laughs> she was makeup in it, and I knew I wanted to be a successful makeup artist. So. Honestly, from where I started, I did a lot of great stuff in five years, and I touched a lot of people along the way, you know. Um, that was great. I, I, I'm still going to do makeup, but, you know, I'm just, you know, on a hole right now so I can do the trucking. So what's you know, so, but, so what what migrated you, what, what, what generated your entrance, <laughs> like your, your entrance, what generated your entrance, interest in trucking? Well, and that's the thing I tell people, you know, I'm overall, yeah, I am a makeup artist, but overall I'm a businesswoman. Um, I really was just, you know, I, I meditated on it for at least a year before I went out and did it. And I, I kept thinking like, hey, you know, if I don't have a house and I live on this truck for a year, no bills, no nothing, I could pay off my debt, I could stack enough money. And I started getting in more, I started researching more about what an owner op was. And I was like, okay. Owner ops make decent money, you know, and I, I just started studying that, and I was like, you know, I was drowned in debt, you know, the typical, the typical person, you know, every day living check to check. I was just kind of, I was making good money doing makeup, but it was all going to just pay my bills, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just was like, you know what, I need an avenue where I can work, stack up all my money, invest this money, and then I'll never have to work again, you know. So. I was like, you know what, am I willing to put makeup on hold? Because that's the love of my life, makeup, it really is, you know. But I was like, okay, this makes sense, you know. So I was telling my guy, at the <laughs> I was like, hey, you know, I think we should do this, you know, because it makes sense, you know. Um, and that's what got me into the truck, and I just didn't know I was going to excel so fast, you know. But I tell people, when you're ready for something and you prepare yourself, mm -hmm. Hey, you can do whatever you want to do, you know, and I have a lot of people coming to me and they're just like, wow, I can't believe you're dreaming that big in the trucking industry. You know, it might not, it might not work like that. It don't work like that for you because you don't dream as big as I do. And it's okay. Everybody's out here for whatever they're out here for. But I know for a fact, I'm going to have three trucks in a year. All right. I already got one, two more to go. And I'm 10 months in the game doing all of this, all you right. know, but I prepared myself for it for a while, you know? So, so so getting into trucking where where did it start what school did you go to or did you go to a uh, uh <laughs> or did you go to a trucking uh, uh, company to obtain your license i went to crappy crappy cr england <laughs> okay well, what was uh what was the experience over there um well you know like they have a, a program where you go through it, it well it's like uh it's like a program 17 days 17 days in and out you know um, I, I really, I really didn't want to go to CR England when I first started. I wanted to go to, uh, I don't know how you say that company's name, Roel, Rail. Rail. They didn't take Rail. me on. So, uh, yeah, Rail. So they didn't take me on. So at the time, you know, hell, I just had a baby. My son was three months, you know, I was still breastfeeding and I was like, look, I don't want to just get up and leave him like this. So I went to the school right around the corner from my apartment oh, okay. <laughs> so I could stay with him a little longer. Okay. And, uh, CR England, I went there and 17 days I was out and on the road, you know, it wasn't a horrible experience, but that's what really made me want to be an owner. You see how these mega carriers are and how they do the actual drivers. You know, you don't have a company without drivers, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I was there for two months. And um, I ended up having a situation with my license with a ticket that I ended up getting two years ago in my regular car. And they did me so dirty because, you know, of course, you got to pay back that loan if you don't pay the whole year. Right. And my intention was not to leave early. You know, I ended up having this ticket. So ironically, I ended up having a court date as soon as I went and got on the road. So I was over the road for two months. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I had a court date. So. I found that I had a court day because I had a failure to appear with they suspended my license, right. which, you know, and I was on the truck at the time. So CR England called me and they were like, hey, we need you to pull that truck over. You can't drive anymore. There's something wrong with your license. We need you to get it squared away. Okay. So uh, I ended up having to park the truck. They sent someone to get the truck, put me back to the terminal, made me catch a bus, go to Atlanta. Where did Long you? Long story short, where, I couldn't drive again until January. Where did you, where did you 
where did they end up having you to park the truck? In Utah. I was rolling through Utah on my way down to Texas. Wow. And they, they, they just told yep. you to, they, they, did you, well, of course, did you, did you park it at a, at a truck stop or did they just made you, mm-hmm. or did they just made you park it like where you was at? No, no, no. They, uh, they, uh, uh, they route at the time I was team driving. So they routed, they, they, I had to get out of the driver's seat immediately. Mm-hmm. So they routed my, um, team driver and I were away to this little truck stop. And, um, and then they, uh, they had us route in the morning to the terminal in Salt Lake City. Okay. And then they made me catch the bus back to Atlanta. <laughs> wow. They gave, they, they, they gave you a bus ticket to go back to Atlanta. That's crazy. Yep. Oh yep. man. Yeah. So, yep. so, mm-hmm. so, and, um, and I was out of work for two months after that. So unfortunate. So unfortunately you had to, you know, being that you had to fail your appear and they suspend your license. What was, what was the process of, what was the process of you going to getting your, your license reinstated? So I ended up having to go, um, go to court. Um, I had to pay the fine. Um, it was too late, but I ended up seeing them. So the ticket posted on my actual record. So now it looks like I had four moving violations in the last three years, which really messed me up, which was like, I was like, you know what, God, this can't be happening because this literally was my whole plan. So um, when I ended up getting down here, they was like, well, you know, even though you paid everything, we still can't allow you to drive until January when the uh, suspension comes off. Wow. So I have to wait until January. So mind you, I just got into trucking, just started, and I was so happy. Mm-hmm. And I was homeless because I left everything to get on this truck, right? Right. <laughs> um, so I ended up staying down in St. Louis with my sister uh, for a couple of months. You know, it was rough, you know. Um, me and, uh, you know, me and my other half, you know, we were trying to call lawyers and attorneys and we just ended up spending a lot of money for people that couldn't even do anything. So I had to wait until January. I tried to call CR England back. You know, I thought they were just going to hire me back. Oh. Right. What they, they were like, what well, they do? now that you're, yeah, yeah, they were like, well, now that you're a CDL holder, there's nothing we can do for you. We can't take you on anymore. What? Mind you, I have this contract with them, right? Right. So they did me dirty. And guess what? They sent that bill to pay them back. And I said, it's crazy how I didn't quit. You all won't let me come back on, knowing that I can't get a job anywhere else. Because when you're on a contract, no, no other company can really deal with you. So the only so here I am with a contract. The, the only, the only, mm-hmm. the only reason that they literally let you go was just for you to go and get your license fixed. And when you, you know, unfortunately, uh-huh. it took you a little bit of time to fix it. But then when you come back to mm-hmm. them and say, "Hey, you know, I got my license fixed. I still got the contract with you." Uh, I haven't had no problems in the first couple of months that I was driving. Why you guys won't let me yeah. back? I mean, did they give you a definitive yeah. reason why they didn't allow you to come back and finish out? All she said was because of the ticket that I ended up getting, I couldn't come back because I, I now at that time was a, a licensed CDL holder. And I was like, ma'am, the ticket is two years old. Right. In a commer- I mean, not even in a commercial vehicle. Right. My commercial record is squeaky clean you know okay Ooh, god keep it that way i don't want to bring any you know thing bad this way you know but i'm a very safe driver you know right i just you know i was young and dumb young and dumb doing dumb stuff i have to be honest about that you know i didn't i didn't know i was going to be a cdl holder in the future mm-hmm. you know um so that ticket really ended it, it damn near ended my career like immediately and, and i didn't even get a chance to really even break into the trucking industry so um, they wouldn't hire me back on and, 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 you know, I tried to dispute it. I went to HR, all of that. She said, there's nothing we can do, but you know, we can set you up with a payment plan. <laughs> I said, that is so sad. <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all, y'all want your, y'all want your money, but y'all not going to, y'all not going to give me a way right. to make it to pay you guys. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. And I'm sure, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of stories like that. I've heard a yeah, lot of stories. Yeah, a lot, a lot like of hor- a lot of horror stories out of uh out of uh CR England camp. But see, this is what this, mm-hmm. this Not is even what, just CR England, just mega carrier. Yeah, but this is what you guys got. This is I, this is what I feel that some of you guys fail to 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 realize when you're choosing to go uh with a mega carrier to get your license. Y'all fail to read the fine print. You know what I'm saying? You guys is so excited 
by going in and you uh-huh. know it's like it's like they dangling the carrot over the rabbit you know what i'm saying the rabbit is tugging at it trying to get it and that's what they doing they doing they they doing you guys like that fisherman doing that uh doing that chick on a commercial oh you almost there almost got it oh <laughs> you know what i'm saying and that's that's exactly what they doing and then when you guys when you guys get your license they put you through more scrutiny in order to stay with the mm-hmm. company, like giving you lousy miles, giving you lousy, giving you lousy cent per mile, giving you impossible low times and stuff like that. So, you know, you guys got to, you know, you guys got to read the fine print. And that's why that's why some of the mega carriers that does schooling have a problem with keeping drivers because they're not straightforward exactly. with them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And and a lot of that is the problem. And I'm not going to be, uh, I, I'm not completely against that route because I didn't have $7,000 up front to pay for school. Mm-hmm. And and like I tell some drivers, a lot of companies ain't going to deal with you anyway until you got a year. So any, you know, it, it, it for me, it was a learning process because I should have read between the fine lines, but they were softening it up so much, like you know, that's, biscuits and gravy. That's you know, what they, you're right. That's I what they. That that's quicker than I should have. That's what they do. <laughs> that's that's what they do. That's what these exactly. recruiters do. They, you know, that's why. Like uh-huh. like yesterday, you know, I made a phone call to. Uh, I made a phone call. Who did I call yesterday? Uh, national carriers, and you know, at that time, you know, the young lady at like she didn't want to talk to me because I, you know, I I had reservations about what they was offering but you got some recruiters that just try to sugarcoat try to jigaboo try to hoodwink you into coming in and then when you get there mm-hmm. and then when you get there you know when you get there is it's not all it's not all that it turned out to be and they're good with that with new drivers that's why they get away right. with so much because it is so many of you guys coming out into this industry without knowing uh without knowing what this industry is really about you know what i'm saying and uh-huh. and and the recruiters use your naiveness to get you into something that's that might not be contuant to what it is for you like for example i uh-huh. always i always say never get comfortable in a company. I learned that the hard way. Everybody else is going to learn that the hard way. But if you call yourself getting comfortable in the company, you you leave everything behind. You put everything in storage. You you come out there bare bones and you get comfortable with this company and then all of a sudden the company turns face on you, then then what? You're flat out on your ass and yep. they give you a bus ticket to get back home and that's 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 it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yep, they did me real dirty. But if you know what? I always tell people, you know, people be like, you win some, you lose some. No, you win some and you learn lessons if you learn the lesson. That's what's up. And, um, you know, honestly, I tell people when you first start trucking, literally, you, you either going to jump in the shark mouth, the lion mouth, or the bear mouth. You got to choose your poison. Because you ain't going to come up in here and call them the shots at first anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, ownership is the way to go, you know. So I already knew I wasn't going to stay with a company long. I just didn't know I was going to get kicked out the company so soon, you know, but it built, it, it, it built a lot of stuff in me. You know, um, I kept going after that, you know, I didn't just sit around and uh, uh, mope and cry, you know, don't get me wrong. I cried, but my, my motto was cry, but keep going, you know? So you did, um, so you did keep going. So, you know, I was upset about it. So you did keep, so you did keep going. And, uh, you mm-hmm. say about a couple of months later, where, where did you, where did you land to finally, uh, <laughs> to finally learn, a little bit more about the about the industry to get to where you at right now um so even though i wasn't at cr england i you know i kept researching you know how to be an owner off i'm like you know what if nobody's going to give me an opportunity i'm gonna take it okay period i'm putting my place up in a position in this industry because i know what's for me and i'm going to do it so um i looked around i called millions of companies oh my goodness people don't understand i called so many companies Mind you, I'm only I'm only two months in the game with an old ticket on my record from two years ago, mm-hmm. um, and, it, and it, it was a uh, it was a major violation. You know, I'm not going to say I wasn't in the wrong, um, but no company would take me on. I tried. Look, I even went to the worst company, Western Express. Tried to get a job up there, and um, the lady she was like, "Oh yeah, we can take you on. We'll hire you." Da, 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 da. Mind you, 
at this point, you know, I, I'm homeless. You know, I don't have a car, you know, because I gave up everything to get on the truck. Mm-hmm. Um, so I spent my last money to rent a car, drive my son back to Atlanta. I drove back to St. Louis. Then I got on a bus, got on the bus and went down to Tennessee, stayed out there for a week, just for them to tell me, hey, we can't even take you on. I was so livid. So even, even West, so even me. Western Express wouldn't take you on, even that you took the trip even all the way down there. Huh? Yep, yep. They made me come way down there. They didn't give a damn about wasting my time, my last money. He was like, "Well, we'll get you a bus ticket going home." Wow. I was like, "Lady, I don't care about no bus ticket. I'm like, this is my livelihood you're playing with. You know, my time, my money. You know, so I didn't get the job with that man. You should have sent me on that bus ride back to St. Louis, legs hurting and everything." Mm. You know, I, I was I was so upset and I cried and I'm just like, you know, you know, God, I really just want an opportunity. You know, this is something really that was supposed to be impactful to my life, you know. So after that, you know, I stayed at my sister's house for three more months. Or was it? Uh, yeah, that was January, February, March. Yep, I stayed out there for about two and a half months longer. And um, um, I was like, you know what? There's got to be a way that somebody will hire me, even if it's the owner off, you know. Okay. Um, because they have, they tend to have private insurance, so they'll take people on. You know, they'll be a little more lenient with people. So I ended up getting into some of these trucking groups. You know, the same way you found me. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up uh signing up for uh, uh all truck uh, uh finding an all woman truck group, mm-hmm. um a black woman's truck group. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in the truck group now that you found me in, mm-hmm. and I just started posting my story, and I'm like, hey. Da, 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 da. You know, I can't get a job. I really need an opportunity. This is on when I say I went into this group with all women. Let me tell you something. I posted my situation. I had women calling me left, right, messaging me left, right. What's on your record? What's wrong? Hey, we're going to get you here, 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 here. Do this, do this, do this. When I say they were on me and I'm ever grateful. Do you understand me? That's what's up. Um, I, it, was a, it was a woman named Sarah, uh, a woman named Sarah from a group that I'm in. <laughs> Hopefully she hears this because I'm telling you, she changed my life. You know, she was like, hey, you know, we've all been there. You know, I ended up um, doing some time, you know, in prison and I got out. And, you know, she was telling me about her boss and how he worked with her. So I ended up giving him a call. And the funny thing is, uh, I got so tired of just laying at my sister's house. You know, my son's dad was driving trucks at the time. So I was like, hey, you know, I'll just ride on the truck with you, you know, until I can, you know, get back on the road. So I ended up getting on the truck with him. We ended up coming back to Georgia. So this is like on a Wednesday. Um, I ended up reaching out to her. She reached out to the boss. He ended up hitting me up the next morning. So I'm literally, when I got off the truck on Wednesday, Thursday morning, he called me. He said, I'll take you on. I'll hire you. He was like, I ran everything. You're good to go. He was like, can you pick up the truck? I was like, yeah, definitely. Heck yeah. You know, mind you, I'm ready to get on the truck. Um, and I was like, well, when I got to pick up the truck? He said, I need you to go pick it up right now with the petrol in Atlanta. <laughs> okay. That's what's I was up. like, are you serious? That's I just up. got out the truck, right? That's what's up. That's, that's, that's what's up. <laughs> shout out, shout, shout out her name again. What, what was the young lady's name? Dad? Shout out to Sarah. Sarah, to Sarah. definitely. Shout yes. out to Sarah. So you, so are you, are, she, yes. so are you, con- so with that, are you, are you still with the gentleman or? You just took that opportunity to get a little bit more experience to 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 rack up because you say you you're owner you you're owner op of a truck now, right? Uh huh. Okay. So what was uh? So that's that's the thing. You know, the story gets deeper than that because this here's more adversity to come, right? Okay. So I started with that company in March, right? Mind you, I've been out of work for three months. Okay. What actually five months? What? No, I've been out of work for about three months, four months now at this point. Started with this company. I mean, it was gravy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and that's the funny thing. I went from making 17 cent a mile at CR Income. They weren't paying me nothing. Mm-hmm. He ended up paying me 40, what, 42 cent a mile. Right. I ended up getting a solo route, dedicated, home every weekend. How many new drivers do you know are doing it in the first year? Not, not, that, many. So, not that many. So, right. So that was a blessing. But, boom, here comes the adversity. <laughs> Two months into that job. A vet driver hit me at 70 miles an hour while I was pulled over on the shoulder lane with my hazards on because I was having some issues with the truck. So I had to pull over on the shoulder real quick um, and, um, you know, just try to see what the sound was because it was slowing down the truck. Mm-hmm. So I ended up putting, um, I ended up walking out the truck. Had I been out there for two more minutes, that guy would have literally killed me. Wow. Smashed on. He hit, he hit me right on the right side, 70 miles. He smashed up my trailer. And um, 
he uh he he, um, he smashed up the side of the uh tractor a little bit too. Mm-hmm. And I was inside the truck standing up. All I heard was a boom, and I just kind of flew to the front. And I was just like, "Oh my god, oh my god, what what happened? What happened?" So the guy, mind you, hit me at seventy miles an hour in a truck. So, um, you know, his face was bloody. You know, he messed up his truck really bad. You know, I'm freaking out because I'm like, I just got my job back. Right. I wasn't even thinking about the impact. I wasn't thinking about anything but my job. Because um, I'm like, oh, my gosh, what, what's going to happen, you know? So that right there ended up putting me out of work until I bought my truck. And I that was April. And then this was around COVID. So a, a lot of things started slowing down. And um, the only reason I couldn't really go back to work was because the truck that I was driving, that was the only automatic that he had. I learned in the automatic. All the other trucks were six shift. I didn't even know how to drive a six shift. So, so you know, he tried his hardest to get me back on. But he, and, but um, he couldn't. You know, he, he couldn't because of the because of the restrictions that you got on your license. The re, the restriction I had on my license, but. You know, as a business owner, I understand he was worried about his investment, which was the truck. Right. So now the truck was in the shop and uh, it was something else wrong with the truck, too. You know, it wasn't just me getting smashed up at this point. That's why I was on the side of the road, because the truck started giving me issues Mm -hmm. and it it wouldn't keep it wouldn't go. So that's why I was on the side of the shoulder. So basically, the truck got tore up even more because I was on the the road. I did my part as a driver. I put my, you know, put my triangles out after 10 minutes. I followed the law. Um, so that happened and, you know, he was like, well, it'll be a few weeks before I get you back on. So I ended up staying in Atlanta, mind you, all I got is a little money that I saved up from this job working. So I'm running through my savings once again. I had to rent a car, stay in hotel rooms, you know, cause that's just what my situation was. And, um, that was, I got off the truck in April. That happened in April and literally from April to, uh, my birthday. <laughs> which so, was July 3rd. So, I was literally looking for work. You know, nobody would take me on. Remember, I still had that ticket. So how, and, um, how, they, uh, how, I'm sorry. Go how ahead. was it? How was it for you to, uh, how was it for you to finally come together and just say, fuck it. Let me just go ahead and get a truck. Which route did you go to, to, uh, to land at? Did you go finance? <laughs> did you go finance? Did you go, what, what route that you went to go and get it? I pay for my truck cash. Cool. No, 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 nothing. Okay. Okay. Where, where did, but the, in, but the impactful thing behind that is divine manifestation. I talked it up so much that God just gave it to me. And I tell people that, and they're like, what do you mean? The thing is, I've been prepping myself for this. You know, I'm deep in my beliefs about the most high, you know, I don't have to take that for nobody. Um, you know, I, I prayed, I cried and, 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 I just knew that these companies don't give a damn about me. They don't. They don't care about me having some children. They don't care about me having to eat. They don't care where I'm sleeping at. They don't care. They don't care. They it's don't. It's all. Real, it's all about. Know? So it's all about. The, it's all about the invest. I mean, it's all about the investment. You know, mega carriers. They yep. they will show. They will definitely show you their two colors, especially if you're you're at fault for something. You know what I'm saying. So that's why mm-hmm. I say it's always mm-hmm. good to mm-hmm. it's always good to read the fine print and not get comfortable. That's why I don't that's why I don't praise companies no more. You know what I'm saying? I used to yep. I used to, you know, I did it with US Express. I did it with uh with uh J and R Swoogle, but I, I don't no more. You know what I'm saying? I just want to get paid driving mm-hmm. the truck. If somebody happens to see me out out in these streets and say hey you know the company that you're driving for i'm interested in i'll give you a card or whatever whatever but you know I, i'm not going to promote i'm not going to promote it on my on my platforms no more like i used to you know mind people now mind people that when i did it for jnr swoogle i got paid for mm-hmm. doing it for jnr swoogle not just for the referrals i also got paid additional for doing it for jnr swoogle now if a company comes to me and say, hey, we want to, you know, pay you for advertising or for uh, sponsorship. Yeah. Then I, I'll I'll mention your name all over my video. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But a I lot, need a 
with that. Right. But see, a lot of companies, <laughs> a lot of companies out here get these new jacks that come out here and they show, hey, I'm working for Prime and this is what you do at Prime and Prime this and Prime that or 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 US US Express this or US Express that and down in down if you like what you seeing and like what you hearing make sure you you when you call in make sure you tell them my my referral code is such and such and such and such and let them know that such and such sent you you know what i'm saying and then you got right. all these people right. you got all these people that 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 be calling up that that be calling up the recruiters and say oh hey i saw a uh, junior hernandez video and you know he was talking about prime and yada 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 uh uh okay what's his driver code oh i i don't know his driver code oh okay and then all, <laughs> and then all of a sudden the driver don't get don't don't get credit because that because they're not telling them, they're not telling them, you know, the driver codes or anything like that. You know, I had a whole bunch of issues. I, I had, I, when I was at JNR Schwugel, I had uh, Katie call me all the time like, yo, lockout, uh, do you know such and such? And do you know such and such this? And do you know such and such that? I was like, I was like, nah. Well, they saw your video and all like that. So I, I'll give you the credit. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's 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 how exactly. that's how it is, you know, and, and like I said, I, I learned throughout my time out here and and right now, if I'm not getting paid for advertising or if I'm not getting paid for promotion, then I what's the reason I need to uh mention the company name in my in my videos for? Why do I need to tell you guys where who I drive for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because who I drive for is a small mm -hmm. company. Y'all not gonna if y'all live out of town, they're not going to hire you anyway. So what's the point? Right. So that part. So yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you live and you learn. The best lessons come from life. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So what's the uh? So you you don't have to mention the name of your company, but you're you you got your truck now. You why wouldn't I? Oh well, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Well, the name that I wanted to choose was Queen Transport. So. You know, hopefully if that's still in the mix and nobody got it, that's what it is. The name of my truck is Queen. Okay, that's what And honestly, she was a gift, you know. She was a gift. And it's so funny because it, I have to say this because it was so divine, you know. I I have a vision board. I made I made, I made four different vision boards with four different things that I wanted to do in my life, trucking being one of them. And um, I literally made a smaller vision board two months ago. And um, I had our, at this point, I got to a point where I'm like, you know what? No company going to hire me until about August, September, when, when my tickets go back three years, and then I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Look, I said, God, I'm going to cry, but I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to still try to motivate, elevate, and, 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 and inspire people despite what I'm going through. And I made sure that I did that every day. The content on my page don't lie. This is a lifestyle, not a moment. That's what's And um, that's what's I, 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 I kept myself in a positive mental place. And I was like, it's going to be okay. And it's so funny because once I got to that point of accepting that I might not be able to drive a truck again until about August or September, I'm okay with that. And I remember being on my son's dad truck. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just ride with you until I can get back on my feet. That way I have somewhere to sleep, eat, and all of that. That's, you that's know, it was it, at this point, it was more like, hey, now I need to survive because I feel I, I gave up everything to get on this truck. I'm not going to freak out in fear and run and go get an apartment and all that, knowing I'm going to be right back in the same situation, death. That's so um, I stuck it out, got on the truck with my son's dad, and I made a, I was like, you know what, let me just make a small vision board. Cause I need to make sure that God knows that I need to be really specific about what I'm trying to do. I made a vision board, and I actually shared it on that group. So I don't know if you will find that video, but the vision board is on there. And if you look on there, I, I, I put three trucks in a year. I want to own three trucks in one year. And I said, I'm also going to write my book and do my podcast. And I said, I'm, I'm going to keep inspiring people regardless of what it looked like. And I made that vision board. And I was so I was up all night making this vision board. I didn't fell asleep in the seat with the markers, pencils, all that stuff on the floor. I tell people, you got to write this stuff down. It ain't about just going out. Because when you, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's just real. You know what I mean? It don't have to be all decorative the way I do it. I'm just an artist, so I do it that way. I made that vision two months. Two months. 
And let me tell you something. I cried out to God two months later and I said, God, I'm tired. I am tired. I, all, all I know is that I just want to be successful. I want to get my life together for me and my children. That's all I want. Why am I getting so much help? I'm like, look, if I trust in you, you need to take care of me as your daughter. And I literally challenged the most high with that. I'm not going to lie to you. Three days later, three days later, I had $20,000 to buy a truck. Right. And you want to know how I got the truck, the money for the truck? How? I met a guy a few months ago. I, I, I don't really, when I say I don't know this guy that well, but he, he saw me, uh, he, he saw me and I, I was, you know, I'm always speaking life into people. So, you know, I just started speaking life into him. You know, I, I don't, I don't know why something told me to, and I always do that. You know, and, um, you know, we exchanged numbers and stuff like that because people like, I like your attitude. And, you know, he was like, I want to get into trucking too eventually. Da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I know some groups on Facebook I can link you with, blah, blah, blah. This man called me. This was, uh, this was literally, uh, the beginning of, uh, this month. Are we still in July? Yep. Yeah. This man called me, uh, two days before my birthday. And it's so funny because, I had accepted the trucking thing, but I was still celebrating my makeup business. I was, I was celebrating five years of being a makeup artist. And I had to think about how much I've grown. I'm like, you know what? Let me just be grateful for what I do have to praise. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to still do my plans. Mind you, I got about $900 for my name at this point. I was like, look, I'm still going to go out here to Dallas to get my hair done. Because I literally drove out to Dallas to just to go get my hair done for my birthday. And um, I don't really do that, but I did it that day because I was celebrating my makeup business and I work hard. Uh, and um, I'm on my way to Dallas. And, you know, at this point, I already finished crying out to God and all of that. And I just felt this, 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 this halo of peace on me. And and even though I was sad, I was so happy. So how And uh, mind you, I'm homeless. I was, I was going to divorce, all this stuff, all this stuff going on in the midst. And um, I got this phone call from this guy that I met. I only seen him twice. He called me and he said, hey, I love your drive. I love your ambition. He was like, I know you want to win. He was like, it's just something that's been burning on my heart. And he was like, I saw myself buying something big for somebody. But he was like, I didn't know it was going to be you. But he was like, I want to invest in you because I know you can do this. And he was like, I'm going to send you this money. Make sure you have a truck before you get back home. Happy birthday. And then he hung up <laughs> and I thought he was lying. And I looked in this damn account in my bank and it was just enough money for me to buy a truck. And I'm like, I, 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 I couldn't even breathe. Mind you, I'm broke. I, I thought this money was going to disappear. I was like, uh-uh, secure the truck now. That's all I could think about. And that's why I ended up getting my truck in Texas. So that's where I was. And I said, you know what, God? I'm going to spend a whole day tomorrow. Forget getting my nails done and all that other stuff. I got my hair done now. Don't get me wrong. I got my weed done. <laughs> all right. But I was like, you know what? I said, let me make sure I secure this truck before my birthday. And let me tell you, from this truck I'm driving now, it was for me divine. Divine. I find that I find the title at 12 o'clock on my birthday. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, that's a beautiful <laughs> story on uh yeah. on how you uh, acquired your truck on your birthday, man. That is what's up. Well, mm -hmm. Ariel Ariel yeah. Israel. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on, sharing your uh, sharing your touching story and uh, your ups and downs yes, and all sir. like that. But looks like you're looks like you're you're in a better place now. You you got your one truck and uh you and you out there doing the damn thing. So definitely much success to yep, you. Yep, learn how to haul cars. Yep, and I learned how to haul cars, haul dump trucks. I got all my endorsements. And I learned how to drive a six tip in a week. That's what's up. That is what's <laughs> up. Well, what what uh what uh, yeah. what, uh, what advice oh. you got for uh what advice you got for these young ladies that's thinking about coming into the game? What advice you got for them? Honestly, honestly, my advice for all truckers mm -hmm. is man, commit to the good and the bad of the journey. Don't just commit to the good stuff. Commit to the good and the bad of the journey. Mm -hmm. Try to keep going. Mm -hmm. Hold tight to your vision and what you believe that you see in your head and what you want to mm -hmm. do. Do it. You know, I have a lot of people trying to tell me, oh, three trucks in a year, 
you ain't gonna be able to do that. Why? Because you didn't do it? Yeah. But faith, I just thought about this last night. Faith is knowing, faith is not knowing it's gonna happen, but knowing it's gonna happen at the same damn time. That's what's... And I just tell people to keep going, man, because it gets better. That's what's up. And, 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 and be great. That's what's up. That's what's <laughs> up. That is what's up. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to say one more thing. I know this is so, but um, I'm right now I'm reading this book called the, um, the Master Peter Riches, and um, he was talking about mental attitude. Okay. Whatever you think, the way you carry yourself, your attitude, you're gonna attract just that. So if you know you want to be a successful owner operator. I tell people, eat it, breathe it, live it, walk it, talk it, think it, sleep it, cry about it, all of that. And guess what? Whatever you desire, it's going to come to you naturally because that's what you're putting out in the earth, naturally. All right. And that's what I do. That's why I'm always talking. All right. And I'm always talking. All right. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. Ariel, Ezreal, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Men podcast show, you can definitely do that. Hit me up in the email. That's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or head over to Instagram and hit me up over there. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do over here. You know, I give you the platform. You tell your, tell your story just like Queen did. Because I'm beating up her first name. You know what I'm saying? All right. On that, <laughs> on that note, I got somebody playing me out. And while they playing me out, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell on the way out the door. Make sure you hit that bell so you can get all of the goodness that is Lockout Man Podcast. All right. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and everything. And, uh, and on that note, we are gone. You guys take it easy, and I'll come back at you with another video. Peace.